I've been waiting all day for this, and they are finally out. The four, I believe, yep, these are new Noble Knights. And we got another Ixies monster. We got Pelinor, Kostein, and Claret. And the first thing I want to tell you is don't be lured in by the allure of these. Understand that they still are Noble Knight S cards. Um, you know, the whole concept behind the deck was Kaiser Coliseum, lock your opponent out and protect your Artorgius that was untargetable and indestructible. It was kind of the original premises of the deck. I know a lot of people seem to not like that playstyle, but that was the best way to go about it. And I see they still have not given us a spell card uh, the way that it looks here. The special summon a noble knight from the deck and equip uh, an equip spell from the deck. I don't know why they refuse to do that, but whatever, Konami, you seem to know best. But without further ado, these are the new Fantastic Noble Knights. So, Noble Knight Kustine, or Kustin, which is this guy right here. Oh boy. If you control Noble Arms, equip spell card, you can special summon this card from your hand. Alright. Not gonna lie to you, I really like that first line. Alright. You have another monster on the field equipped, you get to beam this out. It's looking like it's level 4. You only special summon. One uh, custom, once per turn this way, a noble knight monster that was synchro, exceeded, or link summoned using this card gains the following effect. Okay. If this card was special summoned, you could normal summon one noble knight during your main phase in addition to your normal summon or set. You can only gain this effect once per turn. Also, you cannot special summon monsters from your extra deck for the rest of this turn, except for noble knights. Once again, the first thing I am going to tell you here is if you control a Noble Arms card, you can special summon this thing from your hand. I kind of like how they're doing the passive trade-off here, um, giving the next ability to the next of kin, um, which is fine. Um, I The effect's not that great. Um, I mean, let's be real here. Um, I guess passing it on to the Link monster um, is actually pretty cool because you shit out Medrot, do your thing um, with Medrot, and then special summon... Um, off, you know, a soul day, and then a soul day special summon another noble knight, and then you can special summon this, and then you can make Artorgias afterwards. That's actually really cool to me, in in theory. I mean, you're still dealing with fucking noble knight cards at the end of the day, but that special summon clause is really looking good, plus passing it on to a synchro, exceeds or link monster. Um, I think this is the first time I've seen a monster gain the passive effect that's being passed to it. Uh, from its predecessor, so that's definitely something that I could see actually working, but I'm pretty sure a few people are going to have unfairly certain opinions about these cards because they are Noble Knights, but this is not bad at all, actually. I, I have hope for this one. Alright, so the big bad Sacred Noble Knight of King Kastein himself. Considering the fact that the way that they've done this, it definitely seems like there could be more here. So it's two plus no level four Noble Knight monsters. All right, baby, we've already got a, we can shove everything under this guy if we want. Detach any number of materials from this card, then target that many cards your opponent controls, return them to the hand. Oh, okay, I guess. I, I mean, I like how it automatically unequips as many of our materials as you need to. It gets ex noble knights loaded into the graveyard. That part's not terrible. I'll, I'll forgive that. If this card is destroyed by Balor card effect, you must summon one sacred noble knight exceeds card from your extra deck, except for himself. And if you do attach this card to that card as material. And of course, this guy gets to become material. And of course, you can only use that effect once per turn. My first gripe here is destroyed by Balor card effect. It should have said, when this card leaves the field, I would have been much happier for a boss monster. But you have multiple destruction. You have pretty much just a free level up. Uh, the stats on this guy kind of make me want to cry. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not a big fan of 1525, but I mean, this is just a stepping stone to much better things, honestly. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm willing to see where this one goes. Once again, this is normal night support. You know, you can't really expect a lot from this, but for what it is, like, I have respect for this fucking archetype, because Kaiser Coliseum was the shit. Also, Kastein is good. I still think that the Sacred King version of him isn't fucking terrible, um, just for floatability, but, again, that's just my fucking two cents here. So, uh, I, I guess. I'll, I'll give them 
some credit here. And then, uh, what is it? We got Noble Knight Pelennor over here. Level 4, 1900 Light Monster. I haven't seen no more of this Gemini bullshit that they were trying to drop on us 100 years ago. So, Pelennor. You can target one Noble Arms Equip Spell card. Oh, you can target one Noble Arm Equip Spell card. Equip to this target one face of monster your opponent controls. Destroy them, and then you can draw one card. This card not attack for the rest of this turn. Why the fuck you gotta strap on that fucking line? Alright, this one. God fucking damn it, Konami. Why? Why do you have to include the This card cannot attack for the rest of this turn? Ugh, oh, I forgot. We're we're designing noble knight cards. We gotta hinder them as much as we can. This is <laughs> destroying a noble arms equipped to it and an opponent's card is fine. Problem with this card is it does not generate any other advantage besides drawing you a card. Um, unlike his predecessors, which do multiple other things, um, you're still putting noble arms equip spells in the graveyard. I don't want to commit my normal summon to this guy. Why the fuck do I want a lone 1900 beater on the field that draws me a monster, or draws me a card? This does not generate any other advantage. This card is trash. Like, why can't you equip a noble arms from my deck to this card? Let me destroy them and then draw a card. The equip mechanic is inherently bad as it is, Konami. You've already known this. Stop fucking around with us. Give us a pay half our life points, especially summon a noble knight from the deck. You know, we need our hero lives at some point. You know, you can't keep holding out on us from ever. But, like, this is a shit support card. Meanwhile, Custine's up there looking at me like, you know you want to play noble knights again? Yeah, you're right, I do. But you're not good. As much as I want you to be. Uh, we got one last thing here. The, the new equip spell. Noble Arms Clarinet. God. Why is this not an equip spell card? Or a special summon one from the deck. You had the perfect art here. Noble Knight getting a new sword. It was perfect. And you just had to fucking shit on me. So. Equip only to a warrior monster. Alright. Well that's a good first clause. You're going to control one Clarin Clarinet per turn. Three pain, five hundred life points. The equip monster can attack directly this turn. All right. The equip, if this face of card in the field is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, target one noble knight monster you control and do equip this card to this that card. And only use the effect of noble arms clarent once per turn. Hmm. So I can pay five hundred life points to attack my opponent directly with super artorgias. So where's my Kaiser Colosseum? You know, the thing that's protected my, my beefy boss monster. Once again, this whole archetype is designed on said premise of incredibly large boss monster. If said big boss monster is not produced, then you're not able to do results. This is a perfect example of Kaiser Colosseum still being a legal card, and this deck still being able to do this. Giving it untargetable destruction, giving it the means to destroy... Um, back rows, the ability for it to attack directly. That's Clarinet's good, like or Clarinet. Like this card is good for something like that. But in your standard Noble Knight deck, this card does not meet to my standards. Uh, the other two cards, I don't see any real issue with these, honestly. And I've already seen some of the initial reactions from the community on these cards. A lot of people like, you know, they're shit. And I'm sorry to say that these we're not the cards that we needed for noble knights you know we know what we need we know we're not going to get them but let's be real this card clarinet if kaiser Colosseum was legal this would be the shit pelinor does nothing to generate real advantage for the deck which is my problem with this card i don't think that this card is particularly all that good kostein being a floater is great um being able to bounce back up to two cards your opponent feels and then floating into the Super Artorgius? Oh, sure, this is this is fine, actually. Custine is the best support card I've seen in a long time. Um, being able to special summon itself out as being a level 4 for you to climb the ladder with. This card is fucking phenomenal. I love this. The additional normal summon effect is something that, honestly, will probably hold the deck a little bit more together. Just a little bit. It's not a lot. But this, this is a good step in the right direction. You've not disappointed me severely you know one thing at a time though konami you you're walking a very thin line with this noble knight support i know you you've probably got more of this shit coming for us or you could just be making just four new support cards every set i don't know we'll have to wait and see but what do you guys think about the new noble knight support i'm 
this, I want to believe in this. I really do. But that's all I've got for the Noble Knight stuff. Guys, tell me what you think about this stuff down below in the comment section. And do Serenos. The ride never ends, guys. Make sure you enable those notifications to get the latest videos that are being posted on this channel. Make sure you guys check out Van Cole 40 for my Card Fight Vanguard channel. And join me and House of Champions on the Zodiac Duelist TV Twitch stream. I will be interacting with our audiences. And please check out No Limit Gaming and LGTCG.com for the cheapest trading cards on the market. Thanks for watching, guys, and please have a good day.